Hey, welcome to Chew Room. My name is Jacob, and if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, or even if this is your first time, I'll just you would know, or you're about to learn, that I love making booze. Cue the montage! So I've been making grog my whole life, really throwing myself into fruit wines and mead in the last five years. I'm an amateur, I'm not a professional, so take this entire video with a grain of salt, but I have done my research and I have learnt a lot in my journey, and that's why I'm here to share today five ways to stabilize your wine. The reality is there's probably only two, but there's... <laughs> I'll discuss, I'll explain in more detail in a second. But here are two to five ways to stop fermentation. First of all, why would you stabilize? Well, it's very simple. We know how yeast works, at least you should by now. Yeast eats sugar and poops out alcohol, but it also poops out gas, CO2. If you want to bottle that and there's still sugars available in your mead or wine, the yeast will continue to eat those sugars and create gas. That gas, that pressure will build up inside a bottle and cause what we call bottle bomb. So that could, if there's enough sugar, the circumstances are right, which a lot of the times they are, You've got fucking glass spraying across your room. This is not a good idea. That pressure can really build up before it fucking shatters, spraying glass and mead and wine all over your room, causing a huge mess, but more importantly, wasting that precious, precious alcohol that you've been making for the last few months. There are other reasons why you might want to stabilize. Let's say your desired alcohol content has reached the desired level. So let's say you just want to stop it around 10% or 12%, but that yeast strain might want to keep going so you can stabilize, so you can get the desired alcohol, desired flavor profile. And then the third main reason why people would stabilize is so that they can back sweeten. See, maybe the yeast has run its course, but it's too dry now. I personally like a dry mead. A lot of my friends and family like things that are a little bit sweeter. So I make sweet meads. If I'm gonna keep adding sugar there to make it sweet, the yeast is just gonna kick off again. Yeasts are party animals. They are actually quite tricky to stop. They are fucking rock stars and they will keep going until the party ends. And the only way for that party to end pretty much is for you to end it for them. Tell them all to go home. <laughs> so like I just mentioned, if there's no sugar left for the yeast to eat, they will stop. They will stop doing their thing. The problem is if you want to back sweeten, you're adding more sugar to it, they'll kick off. But that's one way to stop fermentation is essentially when they run out of food. Sugar is food for yeast. If there's no more sugar, they can't create any more gas. The second one is if the ABV, the alcohol by volume, the alcohol content is too high, yeasts won't be able to do their thing. All yeasts have a limit to at which they will stop becoming active. They will not die. Again, when they run out of food, they won't die. They'll go dormant. If the alcohol gets too high, they won't die. They'll just go dormant. So you can do this by either fortifying, so adding hard liquor. This is a fortified mead. So this is sitting around 40%. There's no fucking way the yeast can be active in this. Most people aren't doing fortified meads because it changes the flavor. It's a strong alcohol. Most people like to have a nice glass of mead. If you have a full glass of this, you're going to get pretty wasted. Some yeasts have a lower alcohol tolerance. They might conk out around 9%. 12%, like a lot of white wine and red wine yeast will sit around maybe 13%. But then it's gonna be really, really dry. So you're gonna add more sugar, it might be okay. However, if that gets watered down, those yeast will kick off again. So high ABV will stop yeast, it will stop fermentation, but it's sometimes you don't have that option depending on what you're gonna make. The third thing is if it's too cold. Now this one I really wanna stress because I see this all the time. Yeast have a temperature range. Too hot, they die. Too cold, and they go to sleep. Cold crashing. You see this word thrown around on forums all the fucking time. Cold crashing, cold crashing, cold crashing. Cold crashing does not stop yeast. It simply puts them to sleep. People, I see it all the time on forums. They say, I'm going to cold crash it and then bottle it. Well, all that's going to happen is when that gets back to room temperature, once you take it out of the fridge or whatever, the yeast are going to fucking kick off again. Remember, yeasts are party animals. They cannot be stopped. Well, they kind of can, but cold crashing doesn't stop them. It just slows them down. The reason we cold crash is to clarify our mead. This has been clarified. Look how gorgeous that is. And the reason I did, why you do this is you put it in the fridge. That's the best way. Or if you live in a really cold climate, I suppose you could put it outside. Once it gets below a certain temperature, about four degrees is pretty good. The yeast will fall asleep. They'll all settle at the bottom. A lot of sediment, because you know, the yeast are also kicking up a lot of other stuff. If you're doing a fruit wine, there might be bits of shit floating around in there. Once the yeast stop carrying on, they will settle 
and everything will fall to the bottom. This allows you to siphon, i.e. rack, the remainder of your mead out of that container, leaving the sediment behind. You do this a number of times, you get a really nice clear mead. Cold crashing is great, it doesn't stop fermentation. Just remember that. Cold preserves yeast. It does the opposite of killing yeast. It preserves it, that's why we keep our yeast in the fridge. Pasteurization, hot crashing. <laughs> no one says hot crashing. Hot <laughs> Pasteurization is when you heat your wine to a certain temperature that the yeast will die, but the yumminess and all the alcohol won't evaporate. It can be a little bit tricky, so you shouldn't just immediately assume this is easy to do. It's okay on small batches. The, mo the most simple way to do it is to boil your bottles, not boil, but bring the temperature up in water so that the yeast will die. A few problems with this. One, if you don't do it properly, the yeast won't die. They're just gonna keep fermenting. Two, you can lose a little bit of alcohol through evaporation if you don't do it correctly. If it becomes too high, you're probably gonna have a little bit. If the bottle's sealed, it's not such a problem, but then you gotta worry about gases being released. Pasteurization is fantastic. Half the fucking food you eat is pasteurized. It absolutely works. It gets rid of certain bugs. It absolutely kills the yeast, so they become inactive, but it's fiddly. It's a steep learning curve, sort of, and it's not for everyone. It's really hard to do that on a macro scale. Even if you're home brewing and you're really getting into it, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to do so many bottles. And if you don't get the temperature right, you're gonna fuck it up. You're gonna alter the flavor. I find if you heat honey up too high, you lose a lot of those subtle floral characteristics. This can happen during pasteurization. So pasteurization is brilliant. It absolutely works, but you have to be pretty clued up about it to get it right. The other thing to consider, if it's not bottled immediately or once you open it, and foreign yeasts can get in there. There's yeast all around us. There's yeast in my fucking beard. There's people who make beer out of their beard yeast. There's yeast in other places as well. Foreign yeast gets in there, fucking the party's on again, baby. The party never dies on yeast mountain, so just remember that. <laughs> Pasteurization is great if you do it right. It's a little bit tricky, which brings me to the fifth, which is really the second only true way to stabilize your wine and mead, and that is additives. Now, I see this all the time on forums. A common question is, can I make mead, wine, blah, blah, blah? Can I stabilize, can I back sweeten my mead without using chemicals? The simple answer is no. Water is made up of chemicals. Honey is chemicals. Yeast is chemicals. Your entire fucking, Tim Minchin said it best. You know, everything chemical is bad, ignoring the fact that everything is chemical. Now, I know I'm getting hung up on semantics here. I understand that syntax, nuance, language changes over time. And when people say chemicals, they mean artificially created synthetic or toxic chemicals. In this context, the chemicals used are predominantly a combination of metabisulfate and potassium sorbate. Potassium sorbate is just a type of fucking salt. Yes, it's synthetic, but it is not bad for you, okay? Half the food you buy from the grocery store has potassium sorbate in there. You're eating it every day without even knowing about it. And I've got a little bit of news for you guys. The alcohol in your wine is a thousand times more toxic, more detrimental, more devastating to your body than the fraction, the 0.1% of metabisulfate that is gonna stabilize your wine. I mean, you're talking, let's say you got a five gallon batch, you're putting a teaspoon or a couple of teaspoons in there to stabilize it. By the time that gets into a glass, that's gotta be 0.01% of that liquid has metabisulfate in it, yet it might be 12% alcohol. You're worried about a little bit of salt, but not about alcohol. Alcohol that rots your teeth, kills your brain, rots your gut. I fucking love it, alcohol's the best. It's not good for you, let's not pretend that it is. <laughs> and it is significantly more harmful than metabisulfate and potassium sorbate. We got to stop the stigma of thinking that everything that's not natural or that is artificially created is bad for you. And like I said, you're probably eating metabisulfate or at least potassium sorbate every day. Every time you buy wine from the store, pretty much it's gonna have this in there. Unless it's pasteurized, it's got potassium sorbate in it. That is just a fact. You are eating it every day and you're fucking fine, mate. Like I said, the alcohol is worse for you than the metabisulfate. What it actually does though, it doesn't kill the yeast either. It just prohibits them from being able to continue on their function of eating and shitting and having a good old fucking party. So the reason we use additives is because you get consistent constant guaranteed stabilization without too much flavor or if any flavor alteration whatsoever they've done blind tastings where people couldn't tell the difference between one that had metabisulfate some people claim they have it could have changed it in other ways there could have been so many different factors it won't fuck up your mead it's not bad for your health and it guarantees consistent cheap 
Easy, just bang, a couple of teaspoons in there, wait 40 hours, bottle it up, you're good to go, back sweeten it if you want. The issue is, like all these things, yeast are fucking immortal, if you water that down, the yeast will kick off again. So even with additives, you won't stop the yeast necessarily if you water it down. Just like if you water down the high ABV, the yeast will kick off again. Just like when you pasteurize, if you leave it open for too long and foreign yeast gets in there, you can't really stop yeast. It's a fungus after all. They are awesome, they are great survivalists. Pasteurization, 100%, if done correctly, will kill your yeast, but it won't necessarily stabilize your wine if you're not too careful. Additives will stabilize your wine. No amount of yeast that goes in there afterwards will kick off again unless you've diluted your mead, which is very unlikely. It's not like you're gonna be pouring a whole bunch of water into your mead. So, in my opinion, which is what I do to all of my meads before I bottle it, use additives. Stop the stigma, they're perfectly fine for you. There's no scientific or medical evidence to suggest that these tiny, tiny amounts of these sorbates, which are in everything every day, like I said, are bad for you, and they're definitely not as bad for you as the alcohol you are guzzling at an alarming rate. This is 40%, whoo! So I didn't stabilize this with additives, I should mention. I fortified it, but this is a fortified mead. Very fucking heavily fortified, mind you. It's basically a brandy with a bit of honey in it. <laughs> so, sorry to get all crazy about this. I just, people gotta stop the stigma of so-called chemicals. For one, you're using the word incorrectly. Two, they're not bad for you, some are. Did you know you can OD on water? It's called drowning. Everything in moderation, most things in moderation are fine. If you want accurate, consistent stabilization so you can back sweeten, bottle, carry on your day, get absolutely shit faced in the process, I highly recommend a good combination of metabisulfate and potassium sorbate. Again, in a five gallon batch, which is you know, 19 liters, you're only putting a couple of teaspoons in. There's plenty of information out there. I might link some in this video if you want to know how to do this. They're pretty cheap, especially on a small scale, a home scale. It's a lot easier than pasteurization. Cold crashing won't work. None of the other reasons will work unless you create a fucking abomination like this. That's my opinion. You be you, you do whatever you want. If you fucking disagree or you want to have a friendly chat, leave a comment in the section below in the comment section. Let's get a friendly discussion going. Don't be a dick. I've been Jacob the Rant Machine. You've been watching Churu. I love you very much. If you found this helpful, you've got some comments, you're gonna tell me I'm an absolute fuckwit, write it in the comment section below, share this video around, like, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff, and I will see you guys, well, more accurately, you'll see me probably in the next video. Ah, cheers.